everybody, welcome. My name is Lauren. I'm a homeschooling mom of three girls. And today I wanna to share my homeschool curriculum group subjects picks. And yes, this is how I record almost all of my videos. It's like, kind of like a mullet. You got your business on the top and your homeless on the bottom. And that's just how it rolls. I am excited to share our curriculum picks for our group subjects. We do um, like a morning basket group subject. We've always done that. This will be our fifth year of homeschooling. And I am most excited about this year as far as our picks go than any other year. I feel like I've fine tuned and fine tuned as the years go by. And so I'm really excited about this upcoming school year. We change things up a little bit. And in the morning time we do Bible. And then in the afternoon we do our science and our history. So I'm just going to share kind of what we use as we go throughout the day. So first we start off with Bible and we are going to use this year, Who is God and Can I Really Know Him? This is by Apologia. Most people know Apologia for their science curriculums, but uh, they also have an apologetics. So this is volume one of four. There is Who is God and then Who am I? Who's my neighbor? who is the world. And so we are just going to dive in from the beginning. This looks really great. It has 10 lessons in it. The lessons are divided, I think between two and three weeks, you can break it down. Be learning the basics of who is God. It's for a biblical worldview. How can I know it's true? What's God like? If God created the world, why isn't it perfect? Who are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? So it's kind of like an apologetics course. And I'm really excited because it doesn't just go through kind of like in a traditional textbook fashion. It incorporates stories and real life examples. So I'm excited to get a hold of this one. Now it does come with, um, it comes with, a student journal and it comes with um, like for older students and then a junior notebooking journal. I did not pick those up. We are just going to be reading this and just having the discussions. I didn't, we have enough schoolwork as it is. I didn't want to add journaling and notebooking on top of that. My girls aren't really a fan of that. And I want to be, I want Bible time to be a time that they like and look forward to and not a time that I'm making them write a bunch of things that we could just discuss out loud. So if you are interested in that, they do have that. They also have, I think, coloring books to go along with. And um, in the student journal, there is a detailed schedule of how you can plan and lesson plan. Uh, again, I'm not doing that. We're just going to read a few pages a day, about maybe three times a week is what we will read this. And uh, I think it will work out perfectly. I, so I have a first grader and a fifth grader this year. My third grader is actually going to be going to a Christian school this year. If you want to know the details about that, or if you followed me along and you're wondering, wait, what happened? Where did I miss? Um, I'll leave that video down below and you can uh, hear all about all of that. Uh, but for now, this will just be my first grader and fifth grader. So that's kind of a big gap. And I don't want to just tailor everything to my fifth grader just because she is the one who is more can comprehend a little bit more. I want to make sure there's still age appropriate things for my little one as well. So we got uh, How Great Is Our God. This is by Louis Giglio and um, it's 100 Indescribable Devotions About God in Science. I'm just going to be doing this maybe once to twice a week. We're just kind of going to do this one on the days that we're not doing Who Is God. Next is something I'm excited about. I saw this from Christy at These Little Sprouts and it is art. So we're going to be doing The World's Greatest Artist. This is two volumes, volume one, and then there's a separate volume, volume two. This is from Confessions of a Homeschooler. And what it is, is you will be studying eight artists throughout the year. You will be doing Picasso, Van Gogh, Jackson Pollock, Claude Monet, Henry Matisse, Georgia O'Keeffe, Michelangelo, and Leonardo da Vinci. She suggests that you take four weeks per artist, and each artist has eight lessons, so two lessons per week would give you 32 weeks, but it can be adapted to fit your schedule. What really sold me on this is that it, it the lessons are based on picture books, so it's biographies from these artists and it includes um, it includes the biography of their life and their work, but it's more, it's written to like a kid, to a child. And so she bases the lessons off of that. And then there's also gonna be lessons where the children are actually reproducing the works of art. And it also comes with a student 
notebook. I just printed out the first few pages. And what the notebook will include is it's going to have lap book instructions. So you can do that, if, especially if you have an older child. So I'll probably do this just with my oldest one. And then my younger one will just kind of listen along. There's puzzles that they can uh, cut out and put back together. And at the end, there is a little report that they can write. So we'll see how far we get into uh, into depth of all of that. But I at least want to make sure we are studying the artists and, you know, just reviewing their works of art and having the discussion and talking about it and just learning more about these famous artists who we've all heard of, but wanting to make sure we're familiar with their works of art. So the artist study will cover two days per week. That is my plan as of right now. So that leaves three other days. And those three other days, I'm not going to do like a composer study or anything like that. I think I'm going to switch off. It's just studying artists for one year and then another year composers and then kind of go back and forth because I think it's a little bit too much to try to do both. What we'll do is one day a week, I will do some sort of poetry. So I have great poems. I have, I picked, this one is new. We've never used this one before. This one is a few years old. Um, this one is a Thomas Kincaid, a child's garden of verses. It's by Robert Louis Stevenson, but it's two uh, Thomas Kincaid pictures, which I know is totally like from the eighties and nineties, but I really love it. And then the classic treasury of children's poetry. So I'll just read a few poems out of like one of those books and kind of rotate and not going to be super um, super rigid about it or super, you know, we have to do this page on this page. I'll just pick one or two poems to read and that will kind of be it. And then the other day we will do a uh, character study, virtue study, that type of thing. So I have a few books on that. I have The Fabled Life of Aesop. Uh, this would just, obviously you would read this all at one, just at once. This is his life. And then at the end, there's some of his fables. I have a child's book of virtues. We've actually read a lot of these, but I like to reread them. And then the Children's Book of Virtues. And again, these two I've had since our very first year of homeschooling. And I tried to incorporate a lot of stuff our first year and it was just too much. So a lot of it got pushed to this you know, to the back burner. And I said, I'll tell, I'll try again in a few years when my kids are a little bit older and they can have a little bit longer of attention span. So they're going to do, um, they're going to do these as well. And that will actually wrap up our, the morning part of our group subjects. We aren't doing all of this every day. So we will do one Bible. So whether it's uh, the apology of one or how great is our God, we'll do one of those and then we'll do one of the other ones. So whether it's poetry or whether it is like a virtue study, character study. I honestly remember my first year of homeschooling when I was trying to figure it all out and looking up YouTube videos and researching. And I would see all these things that these women had brought to the table for their morning basket. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like I can't do all that. And I felt like I needed to. And so I got all this stuff and it was just way too much. So if you're kind of overwhelmed right now and thinking that this is a lot, then that's okay. Like I've been there. I felt that way too. And if this doesn't fit, sit right with you, then you don't need to do all this. This is just what's going to work for us. This is, we're going into our fifth year. And so I feel like more confident. I know what I can handle and I know what I can't. And so that just kind of comes with time. Speaking of which, that is a perfect segue into my next subject that I'm going to do, which is going to be science. Actually, you know what? I'm going to talk about that last. Next, I want to share, I'm going to share our history slash social studies. And that is around the world with beautiful feet books. Part two, if you have followed me on here and have seen any, any of my other, uh, curriculum group video subjects, you know, that this is one of our favorites, absolute favorites. So we studied, um, around the world with beautiful feet books, part one last year, and we're going to continue and do part two. It is for grades, I think K to three or K to four, something like that. My fifth grader still loves it and she, she enjoys it. And so we're going to keep going with it in around the world with picture books, part two, uh, they are going to be studying Europe and South America. Part one studied Asia, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. Uh, you are not studying North America because that is separate. You know, they have their own studies all about America, but this one will include Europe and South America. And it is going to include picture books, 
the foundation is picture books, uh, nature studies, folk tales, music, art, poetry, history, discussion questions, geography. Again, it includes a really beautiful map book. So we really, really love doing this one. It has been our favorite. I'm going to be sad when we finish it up this year because it's just been so fun to do and I can't wait to dive in. So if you are interested in seeing what what my review was for the first one. I'll link those videos below. You can do a lesson with us. I have all that information down below. Then to go along with the books, uh, with that I have uh, last year, it just so happened to work out that I got the missionary stories. Uh, we were studying mostly Asia and mostly Africa. So I got David Livingston. He was a missionary to Africa and um, Lottie Moon. She was a missionary to China and those paired perfectly with the study. So I said, let's get a missionary to um, Europe this year and a missionary to South America. So we got George Mueller, he was in England. And then we got Rachel Saint, she was from Ecuador she went to Ecuador. I also have Around the World. This is Letters from Children Across the Nations. This is from the Daily Grace Co. And I think this will be good to read, uh, especially if we come across uh, a child who is from the country that we were just talking about. All right. And lastly, I'm getting to science. Okay. So here we go. Here is just a little bit of where my, I feel like craziness is coming in and it's going to sound crazy, but you just have to hear me out and follow my logic and hopefully it'll all make sense. This last year was our first year using uh, the good and the beautiful science units. We did four units and completed them all. And I gave a review on it on my a recent video where I talked about all of our group subjects. I said how much we liked it, especially my oldest child, but I felt like it wasn't really, even though it was, um, it says it's for kindergarten through eighth, it really wasn't for the younger kids. And it was mostly, I would say for like, third, fourth grade and up to eighth. Um, and so I just wasn't, I just felt like that wasn't a really good fit for us as far as my younger kids, but my oldest loved it. So we are continuing to do, uh, we will do a bird unit. So I have birds and then I got this. This is the birds of America, favorite birds of America. And then we will also do energy because it was on sale. <laughs> Partially because it was on sale and partially because uh, Alexia, my daughter, picked this out. Uh, ironically enough, she's not even going to be here for it. So I uh, will still do it anyway because I already got it. So we'll do the energy unit and then I got the books that go along with it. This is The Amazing Mind of Granville Woods and Spark, The Spark. Um, so those will be her units. I also have, um, I'm going to do Marine Biology. It's a free PDF download. And so I had already had it downloaded. So I'm just gonna print that one out and put it together that way. Um, so those will be the three science units that she will do. So I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great if there was like some science curriculum that was just simple and they had picture books to go along with it. In case you can't tell, I love picture books and any curriculum containing them. Literally the next day I saw this and I was just like totally sold. So it is The Good and the Beautiful Fields and Flowers. This is for kindergarten through second grade. So adorable. It has 30 lessons. It, it The lessons are short and sweet. It's going to have a little opening. It's going to have an optional activity. And then it's going to alternate between watching a little, it says a movie. It's more like just a, you know, a little documentary, uh, age appropriate documentary. And then there's going to be some discussion questions or uh, it's either um, a documentary or this is the big book of science stories, Fields and Flowers. So this is going to have adorable little picture books about the science lesson that they are learning about. And again, at the end, it's going to have discussion questions and an optional activity. So this was really cute. It checked all the boxes that I was looking for. So I will do this for my youngest one. She, again, she'll be in first grade. Now, if that wasn't enough, I'm taking it one step further and we are going to also be adding in God's design for heaven and earth for beginners. And this is going to be studying weather and water, the universe and planet earth 
for beginners. So this is the part where you're probably thinking, what are you doing? Three sciences for two students? You don't even have three kids. You've got two students. What are you doing? And I, I totally agree with you. I feel like this sounds a little bit crazy, but there is a little bit of method to my madness. Last year, I was doing science four days a week anyway uh, with the good and the beautiful for their lessons. I would just do a half a lesson at a time. So I was already used to doing four lessons per week. So that wasn't really a big deal. But I noticed that my oldest daughter, she was zooming ahead of her sisters because she could do it everything a lot, lot faster than her sisters. And a lot of time it was just uh, her waiting around while I was helping the other two figure out what they needed to do and cut and paste and everything like that. So I figured what I'll do is I'll still do two lessons per week, but instead of just doing half a lesson, four days, I'm gonna do an entire lesson two days a week. And that actually won't take up much more time than doing half a lesson with everybody just because we were really, really slowed down having everybody involved. But if it's just me and her, we'll get it done a lot quicker. So we'll still do two lessons per week. Um, and we're only doing three units at this point. We might add another, we'll see. Um, and so if it takes us a little bit longer, then so be it. But I think it'll be fun just to have that kind of me and her time to do that. And then the other two days a week, maybe three, three, it depends on how the year goes. Uh, again, the good and the beautiful, this is only 30 lessons. So if I did this once a week, that would be for a full school year. But I asked Lola, do you want to do science once a week or more than once a week? She goes, I want to do it all the days. So we're, we're not going to do it all the days, but I am going to add in this book, well, this book, uh, the other one to two days. Again, I'm not going to be super, super strict on how I do this. I've actually already studied science, uh, space last this past year. So I'm actually going to just skip this unit and really just focus on weather and water and planet earth because she kind of already had learned about that. And so I feel like that would be a little bit redundant to do two years in a row. And so that will take out a third of this book. So that just leaves two sections of the book. And so what we get done is what we get done. I am not stressing about it. If we don't finish it, it's okay. Uh, I just wanted to have the two different options. What I really like about this book is that it has the lesson inside and it also has little like, um, not coloring sheets. There is some coloring sheets, but there's little activities in the hands-on experiments are very, very easy, uh, very easy to do. It's just all household items. So that is kind of my thinking of how we're gonna do it. We're still gonna do science the same amount of days. We're just breaking it up a little bit uh, more. I'm not overwhelming myself. I am, I kind of know what my boundaries are and what my limits are. And so I am not, I feel like this is something that's doable. And again, I'm not putting a whole bunch of pressure on myself to have everything done and, you know, stress out about it. This is just stuff that we're doing and at a slow, at our rate, you know, and so um, that is kind of my philosophy and my take on it. I put more of my pressure on myself for like art, uh, for like language arts and math. Um, and this is just like the extras. That's just how I do it. For you, it may be completely different and completely opposite and that's okay. Um, as far as like group subjects go, I think you'll see a lot of time in the homeschool world that history and science and Bible, all of that is really, really encouraged to be done family style and group style and they say that we'll just cater to the older ones and the younger ones will listen and they'll still grasp it. And then when they learn it, when they're older, they'll, you know, they'll pick up more when they're older. But, and I get that and I have done that a lot as well. And I'm doing that for certain subjects. But on the other hand, I also, like, it's kind of not fair to the poor, you know, little child, the, the middle or the younger children who just, like, they can't help it. So why should they not to get have to get anything fun and age appropriate for them just because they're not the older, you know? And so if you can handle it, if you feel like that that's something that's doable, why not go for it? But if you're also kind of like, I can only handle one thing, then just do one thing. Don't look at what I'm doing and feel like you have to replicate that and do that exactly in your homeschool. Do what you feel comfortable with, what you feel like is a realistic amount for you, what is doable. There was a time and point in life that 
what I'm doing now was not real, realistic for me and not doable for me. But the season I'm in now, it is. And maybe one year it won't be and we'll have to scale back. So I think it just depends. You have to take it year by year and uh, and just kind of evaluate what realistically can you do. That is all I have for today. I can't wait to take some of these curriculum and just do a more deep dive, show how we do our lesson and deep in-depth flip throughs and reviews as we, as we go through it. I'm really excited. I can't wait to get started. If you've used any of these before, make sure you leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so already and hit the like button. That just helps my channel out immensely. So I would really appreciate if you would do that for me. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it as always, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.